Hi, uh, I'm Norbert Gleich, MD, and I'm the medical director and chief scientist uh, here at CHR. There's a lot of new information uh, coming out about early miscarriages. And uh, we have elsewhere uh, discussed uh, the most uh, uh, frequent cause for early miscarriages, which is still believed to be chromosomal abnormalities. Uh, but we have also pointed out that more recent data and a better understanding that we have gained in recent years uh, about uh, the early chromosomal uh, circumstances in pre-implantation embryos, uh, we now believe that chromosomal abnormalities uh, are much uh, rarer than we used to believe a few decades ago. Uh, if it's not chromosomal, it must be something else. And that something else, once again, can be different things. Uh, miscarriages can happen because of anatomical problems in the uterus, whether it's a septum or whether it is uh, a fibroid that is protruding into the cavity. Maybe even big polyps can do it. Uh, but the second most frequent underlying cause is immunology. And immunology is a very widely heard uh, uh, problem in, in, and widely discussed problem in uh, infertility. Uh, but it particularly applies uh, to miscarriages because miscarriages uh, frequently can occur because the immune system attacks a pregnancy and that the immune system attacks a pregnancy uh, can in principle be expected because every pregnancy is obviously a uh, genetically foreign body because half of it is coming from the father yet is usually tolerated by the maternal immune system but under certain circumstances particularly when the maternal immune system is hyperactive, meaning it's working in overtime, which usually happens if the mother has autoimmune problem, has inflammation, is hyperallergenic. In all of these circumstances, those adaption, those, those reprogramming efforts of the maternal immune system when the embryo tries to implant and to survive, uh, they don't function well. And while in women with normal immune systems, uh, the embryo becomes basically invisible, meaning the immune system recognizes it as its own, does not attack it, in women who have a hyperactive immune system, that reprogramming of the immune system doesn't work very well and the maternal immune system does what it is meant to do, which is protect her body from invaders and sees this uh, little embryo as a hostile invader and starts attacking it. The consequence then is a miscarriage. Today we're here to talk a little bit about treatments. Treatments obviously need to be geared at the cause of miscarriages. Now, if a miscarriage is caused by its chromosomal makeup, it's a chromosomally abnormal pregnancy, we don't want to treat it because we obviously don't want to save that pregnancy. It's nature's wisdom that leads to this miscarriage because it's nature's way to protect us from having abnormal pregnancies. This is why it is so important to have an understanding or as much of an understanding as it's possible 
uh, about what's causing miscarriages. Miscarriages are very frequent. If you look at all pregnancies that happen, 15% of them are miscarried. That doesn't even include so-called chemical pregnancies, which are very, very, very early uh, miscarriages uh, before a pregnancy becomes visible on ultrasound. We don't count those pregnancies as pregnancies, even though they are pregnancies that are just very early miscarried. But if we talk about clinical pregnancies, meaning pregnancies that are visible uh, on ultrasound, um, in those cases, 15% get miscarried. And that's a pretty big number. Now, if it happens once, and there's no history that might suggest a different cause, okay, we, we, we can assume that this is a random effect. But once miscarriages happen repeatedly, or even if miscarriages happen for the first time, but the patient has a known medical problem associated with an increased risk for miscarriages, then we need to start thinking about those possibilities. Here's an example. Uh, a woman has a first miscarriage. Most people and most textbooks will tell us, oh, first miscarriage, nothing much to do about it. But if that woman has lupus, one of the classical autoimmune diseases, and we know that she therefore, like with any form of autoimmunity, is at a significantly increased risk to miscarry, it suddenly becomes very important for us to know whether her miscarriage that she just had was caused by her lupus or was chromosomal. Because if it was chromosomally caused, if it was a chromosomal abnormality, as a random event, we, we don't need to do anything when she gets pregnant again. But if it turns out that the pregnancy was chromosomal normal, very likely the cause for her miscarriage was her lupus or her rheumatoid arthritis or any other autoimmune disease or uh, her inflammatory disease, bowel disease, whatever it may be. And that is of crucial importance to know because if we don't treat the next time around, it will happen again and this woman will become what we call an habitual aborter, a repeat aborter. So to know what causes miscarriages is very important. And with modern technology, we now have the ability to make pretty accurate diagnosis. If the problem is immunological, we need to calm down the immune system of the patient. Here at CHR, we see quite a large number of patients with immunological problems. And we therefore have a whole variety of treatment approaches depending on what the underlying medical problem is. If uh, it is inflammation, we may treat with anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, if it is autoimmunity, we will be more aggressive with direct immunosuppression, etc., etc. Uh, immunology is a big part of successful pregnancy, but it is also a big part, unfortunately, uh, of unsuccessful pregnancies, of miscarriages, because the immune system is of crucial importance, both in establishing pregnancy, meaning at the beginning of pregnancy, and then again at the end of pregnancy, when this tolerance of that foreign body, of that uh, gigantically grown uh, uh, human being, uh, of uh, seven or eight pounds uh, when that tolerance suddenly ends and the woman goes into labor. So remember, 
knowing why somebody miscarries is important and in order to find out it is important whenever a miscarriage happens to investigate that miscarriage to see whether it's chromosomally abnormal because if it is chromosomally normal one has to dig deeper and see what's really causing this pregnancy loss. One does not have to wait until somebody miscarries two or three times as many textbooks are telling us before looking for a cause. Why not prevent miscarriages rather than running behind? Thanks for listening.